I have got my very own 3D printed Dave and Rick, and they are frighteningly accurate. And this week, the real Dave and Rick 3D print their way into your heart. I'm Helen Hong, and this is Geek vs. Geek. Um, nightmares for days is what I think no, about nightmare this. Nightmare for Dave. <laughs> I mean, they're so accurate, it's frightening. Very unnerving. Very Creepy. Disturbing. Um, yeah, but uh, actually, you know, this is the world of 3D printing these days. You can 3D print, like, virtually anything within reason. And there is a company that now has these booths, essentially, you can go into. It does a 360-degree body scan, and then you get your own action figure in a variety of sizes. Like, it starts around, what, $75? $75, I think, for a six inch, and then you can get a seven and a half or a nine inch uh, for more money. And uh, yeah, the company's called Shapeify. Yep. And uh, I see that you didn't spring for the slimming option. Um, <laughs> you know, you can pay extra uh, to look like that. <laughs> as, as It's creepy because it's so accurate, but I kind of want one for myself. And the material is really interesting. Yeah. Whereas most of the stuff that you print, like if you get your own 3D printer for the home, it's going to print on plasticky kind of material that, that looks like this. It basically comes in a spool. That's what this is here. This is the micro 3D printer. It's probably about the smallest cheapest printer you can buy right now right uh it is and uh it's about 300 bucks 349 okay start. yep and you know i printed some things um helen hold yes. out your finger please okay. uh-oh i would like you to be our host oh i do <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. But you can see the size wow. of the print bed. You can print like small objects that's and cool. you can download designs from the internet. All oh, that's cool. Um, I have some concerns about this though. Um, this, it's, it's good in principle, but I don't see a lot of people owning these things. Well, of course, now we're getting back to uh, our argument from the, uh, bets, the, the big argument. bets from a couple <laughs> years ago, which was that uh, I said that uh, 3D printers were headed to the home and it's just a matter of time. Five years, maybe ten years. Wait, no, no, no. Let's let's be precise. <laughs> Five years. The Rick's exact years. words. We wrote a blog, a Dave versus Rick blog, yes. about two and a half years ago. I remember this. I remember and this. And Rick specifically said, within five years, printers, 3D printers, would be ubiquitous. Everybody would have them in their home. People would print whatever they wanted, and life would be completely. De we'd be living in a Jetsons universe, presumably. <laughs> and that, well, we're halfway there. And that so was two when, and a half years. And that was when no all one 3D has these. printers were two thousand dollars. Now you can get this adorable little guy in choice of colors for three hundred and forty-nine dollars. It is cute. It's very simple to use. Very drag and drop with the software. And actually, this is my gripe: is that today as to two years ago, and for the inconceivable future, the only stuff you can print are like a really limited array of things. Like I did some practical stuff. I had a 3D printer um, some time ago. This is an iPhone stand that you put in your oh. car. This goes in the CD slot, and that, that works oh. nicely. This CD. is an iPhone stand. <laughs> you put the iPhone in it, and it sits on your desk. I so see a motif. Yes. Yeah. Well, and then this, this like, slips onto like the side of your cubicle and you hang headphones from it. Very oh, you can these buy are that product in stores. That's these are the three that things does not exist you in can do yeah. with a 3D printer. This yes. is all you can do. This iteration still is a little clunky cuz you can tell from the little seams and sides and stuff it's 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 a little rough. They're, they are literally rough around the edges. This obviously is at a much more advanced level of 3 3D printing, but the ones that you can buy for your home are a little bit. Yeah, you're going to print one, one or two colors of yeah. different kinds of plastic. You're not going to be printing food. You're not going to be able to say, computer, Earl Grey, hot. Tea. And yeah, you're not going to get that. Um, so there's a lot of limitations with printers. And I honestly just don't see everybody owning these things. I think we're just at the beginning, though, because now we're seeing products that are starting to look and, and be priced in a way that is suitable to the home and the capabilities will continue to improve. Uh, and we're actually now seeing, starting to see some mainstream products get into this space. Mattel is very soon to launch their own 3D printer for the home that's aimed at kids that will let them print out little uh, objects that they can put together to build things. That's actually a really good product, and I can see kids wanting to like print their own toys. And once they start there, then they're gonna say, oh, I want something that can really do whatever I want. We really need to put a pin on this bet we have. It's been two and a half years, 
two and a half years from now, if 3D printers are not ubiquitous, I win $50. <laughs> cool. All right. See you back here two and a half years. Hi. If you think these things are as creepy as I do, let us know at tech at ehow.com and like us on our Facebook page. I'm Helen Hong. See you next time on Geek vs. Geek. Ha, ha, ha.